All right, welcome to Creator Hardware. Today we're gonna to be building a budget server for Proxmox, could be a Plex server, could be a small NAS. Whatever you use it for is up to you, but I wanted to give you a good list of readily available new components that you can build your first server with. Now we got a couple options on cases. You can build it 100% in this $50 thermal take case. Now I'm gonna be building it in this rack server, which adds about $50 to the cost of the build simply because, well, I have a rack and I don't have a place for a tower readily. <laughs> so I can rack it rather than, you know, trying to find desk space for another server. But you could definitely build it in this $50 case. This is a $50 thermal take case. It holds three hard drives, three SSDs, and this will be a different server build, but we're going to be building in this case right here. Now, all the products I use in this video will be linked in the description. There'll be Amazon links. So if you want to support the channel, click on them. If not, the whole point of this video is just build your first server using readily available parts. Now, obviously you can go out and get a Raspberry Pi for way cheaper, a Zima board for cheaper, but it's this is, allows you to upgrade, customize as you see fit, and that's why we're doing it this way. There have been plenty of videos on, you know, Zima boards and that kind of stuff. You can also do a Dell or HP used workstation, do it that way. But I wanted readily available parts for this build. But we're definitely going budget. So first off, let's talk storage. We got two one terabyte HDST refurb drives for $25.99. I found Western Digitals for 20 bucks. Unfortunately, I didn't click fast enough and they were out of stock. So I got these for five bucks more. Two of these, I've got two bays in this rack mount case. So for storing the operating system, I've got a M.2 SATA drive, 512 gig. It was 20 bucks. That's why I'm using it. Is it gonna be the fastest thing on the world? No, but 20 bucks. M.2 form factor, leaving your SATA ports available for upgrades future on. Let's talk platform. So now I'm using a AMD AM4 platform with an AMD 3200G. This was 90 bucks and has integrated graphics. Now the reason I went this route is this system could be upgraded based on your budget very simply. You know, you could put a 3600 in here as long as you have a graphics card. A couple quick notes about that. Some systems will allow you to boot without a discrete graphics card in the system. Some motherboards will not let you. Now my Unraid server, for instance, is runs on AMD without a integrated graphics at 3600. And because of a bio selection, I was able to allow it to boot without a discrete graphics card. Your mileage on that will vary. Some will not let you use that function. So I got a 3200G with graphics. You can upgrade based on what you're gonna do. I don't know if the BIOS and the board I chose will allow me to boot without a graphics card. You can buy a $50 graphics card just to output signal. If you don't want to go this route, you want to go more cores, more threads. This is a pretty basic, but it'll do Plex transcoding, everything you need to do fairly well. Motherboard, Asus Prime B450MA1. It is compatible up to Ryzen 5, so we're good on that. Not going anything older, because everything older on AM4 was stupid expensive. <laughs> so, that's why I didn't go Intel, is Intel pricing on anything with graphics put the budget about $50, $60 more. So I wanted to stay pretty, I wanted to stay under a price point. So that's why I got this. Now let's talk memory. This crucial kit is 16 gigabytes. It's not ECC, it is just regular memory, no heat sinks, anything like that. 3,200 mega transfers per second. Now you see a lot of compromises in this system for cost. You can upgrade as you see fit with what you want to do with your system based on your budget, et cetera, like that. Now obviously you can upgrade any components in this based on your needs or what, anything like that. And there's definitely some stuff I would definitely upgrade in, <laughs> just saying, but this is just a very budget build for YouTube. The cheapest power supply I could get. <laughs> That wasn't um, some weird brand. This is from Apiva. 
Piva, had good ratings on Amazon. It was $25.99. I will put up what it cost on, on screen right now, but the reason I'm not right now is because my calculations are wrong because I have a couple things in here that were not correct because I didn't update them. So I'll give you the actual updated total after what I paid for them without taxes because that'll vary.
All right, so editor here. This build was strictly for YouTube. I don't have a reason for it, but let me know in the comments what you wanna see me do with it. Do you want me to set up a Plex server and test it that way? Do you want me to set up an OpenSense, PF Sense box, do stuff like that? Let me know in the comments what you wanna see me do with this test system, because that's kind of what it is. It's a test system, so let me know in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching. This is Creator Hardware.